Let your next ride be a razor rod. Hi, I'm Kelly Vandersand with Treehouse Wildlife Center, and you're watching Outdoor Secrets Unwrapped. 42, 39, 56, you can say she's got it all. Welcome back to Outdoor Secrets Unwrapped. I'm your host, Chris Bates. Boy, we're having such a great time here in Collinsville at the Outdoors Show. And we're walking down the aisle and I, ha I go, hey, let's turn in this booth right here. And we're looking at all the cool stuff they got, right? And I ran into the owner, Chad du Hi, Deaver? Deaver. Yeah, Chad Deaver. He's the owner of Apex. And why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are first and then talk a little bit about Apex. Um, so I'm a, I'm a tournament fisherman in the Midwest. Uh, okay. We fish, you know, local regional like events it. here, from team yeah. events to solo I'm events to pro-am events. Right. Uh, but just pretty much cover the Midwest. Okay. Um, you know, we do it. We fish 200 days a year. Fish 30 to 50 tournaments a year. Wow. On the road all the time. Yeah. Grinding. Yep. So how did you get started with all these lures that you have? Did you start making them and said, "Hey, I can do that"? No. I, so. You know, doing this game for 20 years, um, tinkering, always want to find something better. Yeah. From something that stocks, uh, you know, and tweaking it, um, and just starting to, to roll and develop your own stuff. Right. That you find out that it works really well. Yeah. Um, and then also, Apex Tackle is kind of geared towards uh, baits and lures that um, save fishermen money. You know, like our swim bait heads had swim bait head has a locking harness on yeah. it where your swim baits don't pull off throughout the day. It locks them on. So as a tournament fisherman, you're spending more time in the water and not in the bottom of the boat. Right. That's kind of the goal behind all this. Right. You know, out east where I'm at here in uh, New England, we hardly have any tournaments, so to say, other than on Lake Champlain. Yep. So it draws a lot of big bass anglers and all kinds of stuff, but out here in the Midwest, I miss it so much where every weekend I could go to a different lake, you know, or a different river, and yep. there's a tournament. So. Oh, yeah. We are blessed beyond in Missouri and in the Midwest. I mean, right. Just having so much diversity from shallow, dirty water to right. clear water, right. and, it, and it really makes uh, really makes you a good fish by just being centrally located right. in the Midwest. So how do people get hold of you if they want more information? information about Apex. Yeah, here. so the easiest way to get a hold of us is apextackle.com. Okay. Is the easiest way. Our phone number, our emails, everything is on that website. That's okay. our main website. That's the easiest way. Okay. Um, you can also uh, reach us on like Instagram at apextackle.com. All right. Same thing with Facebook. All right. Great. All right, folks. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll be back with more right after this.
Frank with HH Rods and Reels. And I'm Eric Howard with HH. And you are watching Outdoor Secrets Unwrapped. 42, 39, 56, you can say she's got it all. Hey, welcome back to Outdoor Secrets Unwrapped. I'm your host, Chris Bates. Wow, what a great time here in Collinsville at the Outdoor Show. We were happy to be walking around and we ran into Brandon Polinick, the Bassmaster uh, Classic, what is it? <laughs> Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, you know what? I tell you what, I would screw it up if I, you told me 20 times. Anyway, thank you so much for spending yeah. some time with us. You know, real quickly, you know, a lot of times people ask me, what's it like to be a pro angler? And I yeah. try to tell people, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And a lot of money. So let me hear from you on really what is it to be a pro angler on a elite circuit? Uh, I mean, it is a, it's a, the most rewarding and the most challenging thing at the same time. Right. Um, right, it's full of highs and lows. That's why I always tell like these young kids in high school that are wanting to join their high school teams and they want to fish for a living and say, look, you, loving it's not enough because if you get your teeth kicked in that much, you're going to learn right. to love something. Right, so right, right. You, you have to be able to you know, not live without it. You have to want it that bad. And it, it's a lot of work, um, but when it's something that you want to do, right, it's, it's all that I want to do. And it, it's when people say, oh, you fish for a living, they think you're just out on the water fishing all the time. Right. But right. with that, if you're doing it as a profession, you have to work shows like this. Right. right? And so uh, talk to I'll, people like me. Yeah. Come here. <laughs> right. We do interviews. We do videos. Right. Uh, I'm here with Skeeter and Yamaha, and the folks mm -hmm. at Dubo Marine brought me in. Okay. Giving seminars, talking to people. Uh, I, I think this is the fifth time that I've been at this show. Wow. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a lot of work, a lot of travel, uh, a lot of money. Right. Uh, but it, it's all enjoyable. You know, um, I did a TV show on ESPN quite a few years ago, and the travel was killer. Yeah. And people would say, oh, what a great job you have. It's like, but I'm never home. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, what do you do? You know, you bounce from here to here to here to here. Yeah. So, and then what kind of um, what kind of boat do you have? You know, I'm sure a lot of my viewers are going to want to know, hey, what kind of boat do I you use, and what yeah. can I get? Because if you have one, I want to get one. Yeah, so I, I run what's called a Skeeter FXR20. It's a 20-footer. Uh, it's got a 250 Yamaha SHO mm -hmm. on it. I've ran a Skeeter my entire career. Uh, this is my 13th boat that I've had this season. Um, and so, I mean, it's it's what I rely on. Right. right? That's our vehicle to get from point A to point B. Right. So speed's important. We fish everywhere from the Mississippi River or down in Florida, you know, down in the shallow water places all the way to the Great Lakes. So you need a boat that's super versatile, right. can handle shallow water, handle big waves, big water, uh, and one that's going to you know allow you to be able to run with confidence. What about Lake Champlain? Have you ever made Lake Champlain yet? Yeah, yeah. Champlain's one of my favorite lakes in the entire country. Is it? Oh, yeah. Boy, if you ever come back up there, I have to come up and see it. Yeah, it's a phenomenal place. Um, I've fished all over that lake. Yeah. I mean, fish the Vermont side a bunch. And yeah. It's a cool place. I love that pike fishing. Like, boy, oh boy, you go in the <laughs> back there. You know, there's some yeah. big pike. So another quick thing real quick is, you know, someone starting out in bass fishing, right? What kind of rod would you recommend for the, for the 
like the weekend angler that maybe want to try it, or say you're a high school student, what what kind of rod would you push them toward? Uh, if, if you're just starting out and you yeah. hardly fish at all, I would get spinning rod. Right. Uh, you're going to have a lot less headache right. versus a bait caster. Uh, and I would start with, you know, say a seven foot medium. Okay. It's a very good all around size rod and action uh, that you can do a lot of things. Drop shot, Nico rig, you right. can throw a lot of stuff on it. Uh, if, you, if you're a little bit more advanced, but you're just beginning, you want to get into a bait caster, uh, I would look at like a Daiwa Tatula Elite, mm -hmm. uh, a reel that's really easy to use, really easy to adjust, and then maybe like that 6'10 to 7 foot size in a medium heavy action on right. the bait caster. You can do a lot of stuff. Because you know, I see a lot of people and they're like, boy, I really don't know. You know, for me, it being a trout angler, I know what I need. Yeah. So we're not. We're not talking six foot, seven foot rod, you know, we're talking little tiny stuff. So, yep. but for the average guy, I think that's wonderful. Do you have a, a rod of choice that you would recommend? Yeah, so, I mean, if I was just starting out, I would pick up, it's what's called an Alpha Angler Power Skip. Okay. Uh, you can throw spinner baits on it, you can throw frogs on it, mm -hmm. you can do a lot of different stuff. You can skip and pitch. And, uh, so it, it's a good rod that's short enough, it's easy to handle, it's really light, well balanced in your hands, so you're, nice. you're not going to get overworked throughout the day. Um, you know, for me, as doing it as a profession, right. I carry 30 to 35 in the boat a day. Right. And I may use anywhere from three rods a day, and I may use all 30 in a day, right. uh, depending on the technique. Right. And then one last thing, and I'll let you go. Sunglasses. Yeah. Everybody cheats on sunglasses. Have you ever noticed that? Oh, yeah. So, for me in, in New England and in Vermont, I always tell people, brown, wear brown. You don't yep. wear brown, you're not catching fish. Yep. What about you guys on the lakes? Do you have different colored lenses for different lakes, or are you partial to one lens and it's all good for everything? I definitely lean more towards that amber, bronze type of lens right. color palette. Um, everybody's eye might be a little bit different. I definitely lean towards that. That's my go-to. Right. Uh, I will go to a lighter, you know, maybe closer to the yellow lens or yep. something. Uh, when it's dark conditions, early in the morning, things right. like that. You just you want to find something that is going to cut that glare and really see through that water well. And in fresh water, it seems like most scenarios that bronze to amber tint works the best. Absolutely, because when people come to fish with me, they wear blue and green, and they're like, yeah. I can't see that. I'm yeah. like, because yeah, right. You're used to really deep, clear water, more right. of that blue, greenish tints in that water. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I welcome. appreciate it. Thank Have you. a great rest of your time. Yes, you do. All right, folks. We'll be back with more right after this. Let your next rod be a razor rod. We're gonna let this bad boy go, but wow, look at that fish! Oh my god, that's a wow. wow! Stay tuned for your outdoor tip of the week. <laughs> All right, so we want to talk about something that's very, very, very dear to us, and that is our sunglasses. Sunglasses. I mean, you have been telling me for years, oh, I can see a fish. I can see a fish. We drive by, and you're seeing fish in the, right. in the river all the time. I'm going, I can't see anything. And the reason is because I can't see past the reflection, and I can't see into the water because right. I don't have the right sunglasses. So... I have become pretty well educated in sunglasses, mm -hmm. okay? And the number one thing is polarization. You right. have to have polarized lens for... To cut past the glare to and, cut past get, the and glare. look into the water. But there's other issues that go with those lenses. That's right. Now, these are salt life, so salt life optics. Right. You... They're very high-end uh, sunglasses, but they're fishing sunglasses. I mean, yeah, right. you can wear them 
uh, out, you know, because they are, they're pretty nice. I have the Tortolas is what these are called. And um, I like them because I'm going to go through this real quickly, is I like them when I put them on, they fit snug to my head, okay? Mm -hmm. And I can't see, if you see this, right. the sides, I can't see anything other than what's here. What's so in front, right? nothing's so bleeding through, like you don't get... The light, you don't have light coming through, correct. ambient light and things like correct. that. Yeah. So I have noticed that too with these too, because most of my sunglasses that I wear right. sit in front, right. but these sit are very snug to right. my, you know, so they're sealing out any of that glare. Correct. And, yeah. Right. It's, it's very a, it, important. It feels a little bit different than what I'm used to, but I've noticed that when I'm looking, right. because we tested these looking right. into the water. It made made a huge difference in how I could see into the water. Correct. So, one of the most important things about these sunglasses is number one, they're made for fishing, and number two, you have your choice of lens color. Okay. <laughs> so, if you are fishing green water, like we have here, we have brown water. Brown water. We have brown okay. water. But if you're fishing green water such what as algae, oh, okay. thick water. So or we do have that maybe if you're going to a lake, to a lake. or something like that where right. you're going in the, near the inlets and around the edges right. where it's kind of got algae and right. you want to catch that big fish that's been swimming under there. You're going to want to go with a green lens. If you're on the ocean, you want to go with a blue, blue lens. lens. I have noticed that. But for us here in Vermont, and for what I do for my trout fishing here in our streams, because they're gravel bottoms and because... You're right. Yeah, it has a very brownish... It's brown water. So what I, mean, I The have, water isn't actually brown, but the, all the, the stuff under it is makes brown. it... Look brown. Look brown. So what I've done is I have chosen the amber copper lens. So if you hear amber or the term copper... Mm -hmm. and you're living the Northeast, this is what you want, okay? You want those amber slash copper lens because you could see right to the bottom. That's right, yes. Yeah. So your your, right. col your color is important. I think a lot of, I never knew that before. Color is uh, very know, important. We have tried this and we have another uh, pair that are have blue lenses and and, and I don't and I don't particularly like those around here but when right. we go down to the, keys. to the keys and we go fishing in that kind of water oh my those right. are those are just like amazing to look through the blue lens but right. these are really nice here right this, so, so rose colored lenses are also very good for trout fishing here in our streams because uh -huh. it cuts the glare and it cuts through the water and it goes right down to the bottom. So I like can, I like rose too, rose color. Can right, you see the right. world through rose colored glasses. So it's very it makes the world look nice. <laughs> right, but it's very important that when you go to get a pair of sunglasses, uh, you know why. Right, and Salt Life is very very good in helping you pick one out. That's right. So because there were there were so many, we were on their website. Right. You know, and they said, you know, that we could pick some out right. for our area, and they helped us along with what, what ones right. would be appropriate. Correct. And it's like, wow, look you at, all, decide. Look at so, all those, those so, options that you have. But now we know that we want to have a brown lens, an amber lens. Yep, amber lens. For and, fishing, and we absolutely have to have a polarized Yes, sunglass. and you fit them snug to your, here, you fit them snug they have to fit snug here okay yeah so so that's yeah so it's great and so right. good sunglasses are are very expensive are, they are expensive but and they, they might not be the same sunglasses that you would be wearing for driving that's correct necessarily but if you're serious about fishing right what a difference it makes. It does. No, I can see the fish in the water, too. You're not the only right. one. I thought you were crazy, honestly. No, and I only use these. <laughs> I thought these. you're making it up, but you can see them. Right, and I only use these for fishing. I don't use them for anything else. They're right. just my fishing They're glasses. They're fishing glasses. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so, all right. Well. That was fun. Gosh. Maybe we should get some more and try We're going to get some more I products, like trying right? trying out stuff. I love trying out stuff. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun. And right. Then, we can share our experience with the you mass guys. of people, right? <laughs>
Jesus got it all. Hey, welcome back to Outdoor Secrets Unwrapped. I'm your host, Chris Bates, having a great time here at the uh, Gateway Fishing Expo. Anyway, I'm walking around and in our Razor Rod booth, we have the Steel City Bassmasters and we have Larry Hagee. Mm -hmm. And he is the president of the Steel City Bassmasters and, you know, clubs, mm -hmm. right? How did this get started? How did you start okay. the, uh, the Steel City Bassmasters? Has it been around a while? Yes, so this is our 35th year wow. as a Bassmaster sanctioned club. And, uh, you know, I was just reading my Bassmaster magazine and I saw there was a little handout in there that said, create your own bass club. And so I inquired about it through snail mail. Right, and, back in the day. Uh, yeah, and back in those days, you had Ray Scott on TV saying, right. Create your own bass chapter, call this number, and we'll send you the information. So I right. did it. And uh, so that was 30, well, that was 1998 that I sent all the art. I'm sorry, 1988. Mm -hmm. And in 1989 was our first season. So this is our 35th season coming up. And I've been president from the start. I was just going to ask, that is quite a feat, right? Yeah. So what are some of the things that you guys do do and how do you go about looking for members okay yeah i mean actually this event here at the gateway center this is one of our big recruiting uh okay you know methods and uh the features that we try to bring out to people who are looking for a bass club right are number one you know we don't draw for partners you can fish with whoever you want okay we decided this, or I decided this right off the bat, 34 years ago, right. that what we really want to do here is have a venue for people to fish with their son, grandson, granddaughter, right. grandson, you know, whomever. And uh, I, it's it shouldn't be a function, you know, it, it, it shouldn't be so restrictive that we prevent someone from fishing with their right, family excellent. member or something like that and have right. to draw for a partner. Um, we also, instead of fishing just local lakes, like, you know, some bass clubs have... They're home lake. They're absolute, like, home lake. Right. And everybody knows where to go and they all go catch fish and have a good old time. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Some will, will restrict their, uh, you know, they'll have a radius of like 100 miles around St. Louis or whatever. We do not have that. There are some fantastic Highland Reservoirs in the state of Missouri, Table Rock Lake, Lake of the Ozarks, Lake Pond de Terre, uh, Mark Twain Lake, right. Truman Lake. We like to include those on our schedule so that, but you know, our membership wants to fish those big waters. Kentucky Lake is another right. really good example. Right. Big Lake in the state of Illinois is like Shelbyville. That's on our schedule this year. Stockton Lake in Missouri, another one that we're looking forward to going to for the very first time this mm -hmm. year. That kind of draws people to our group as well. And yeah. what kind of turnout do you generally get from these events? Okay. Um, you know, some, I would say the number of boats, we would range anywhere from 15 to 30 boats in a tournament. Depending on what lake you're at, I'm sure, right? right. And yep. time of year and right. all that, right? So do you guys do any fundraisers for charities or just for your own club? Absolutely, we do that. You know, we've had uh, raffles, we have uh, silent auctions at our banquets, mm -hmm. things like that. And uh, what we raise money for, we have a very close relationship with the Granite City Police Department okay. that has a program called Shielded Waters ah. where they go out, in, you know, they, they know these troubled kids in the area and what they wind up doing is telling them, hey, you know what, you need to get straightened out. Here. Right. We're going right. to get you involved in our Shielded Waters program and it'll start with you being one of the fishermen, then eventually what we want you to do yeah. is be a mentor to these kids and tell them, you know, get them off the couch, right. playing video games or getting into trouble. 
Right. And uh, let's get them out in the outdoors and show them that, you know what, there's a whole lot out there to appreciate. And it's really work. It's, it's a really neat thing. We still do this uh, at least once a year and have a big uh, fish off, yeah. you know, in the, at the uh, city of Maryville's park, Gross Park. And oh. that's, so that's our primary nice. fundraiser. Nice. Yeah, nice. yeah. And then now do you guys go to other outdoor shows or is it... Um, Again, it's volunteers, so it's trying to get people to come to the yeah. sit there and try to recruit members. This is it. And it, is there this a is cost? It. What is the cost to join your To join the club, to start out, it's $40 per person. And, uh, you know, after that, it goes up to, I believe, $60 for years after. Okay. Uh, we do have a big raffle that allows these guys to offset the cost of their right. membership. If right. They sell a whole bunch of raffle tickets. But uh, yeah, that's the that that's what it costs, and then it's thirty five dollars per event okay. per person to enter. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, how do people find you guys? SteelCityBassmasters.com okay. is where you look, and uh, we have a great website that will direct new members who are interested to you know find out all the information they want, and they can sign up. They can pay right on there. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. You're welcome. It. All right, man. Take right. care. Enjoy the show. All right, folks. We'll be back with more right after this from uh, where we at? Gateway. <laughs> Trout Fox. Bye. God. Thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll meet you again. May God bless you. Adios. Wise men say, holy fools, only fools are shame. But I, but I, I can't falling in love.